a trip around the world in 80 minutes. This story comes from when I worked in an inbound call center. I handled escalation calls. When someone called in regarding their service plan with complaints that cannot be handled with a regular agent's authority or the caller demanded to speak with a supervisor or manager the call got transferred into my team's call queue and one of us handled it. Little background. I was born and raised in the southwest when I was wee little child I spoke with a very heavy stutter. It took several years and lots of patience on my mother's part to teach me how to speak normally. The outcome was that I had to enunciate all my words carefully and thus spoke without any hint of a local accent. Later during my middle school days I got teased a lot for not having a proper accent. So, I decided to teach myself how to speak with ta propar ako cent. I watched a lot of my dad's old black and white westerns to learn the lingo. Then I started talking like Scotty from the original Star Trek series. It was fun. So I started copying other accents from TV and movies. I had over a dozen. Including German Sergeant Schultz. I know nothing. Pirate and badly dubbed Chinese Kung Fu. Lots of pauses. Simple phrases. And every sentence ends in, ha. Single quote. One bad side effect came about though. Often when I'm around a person with a heavy accent I subconsciously begin to mimic their accent. I don't realize I'm doing it until it is pointed out. Usually the other person thinks I'm making fun of them or something. To avoid getting punched in the face I have to do some quick explaining. Without the borrowed accent. So the call. A call comes into my queue and I answer it as normal. Kinda. I had been joking around with my supervisor while using an Indian accent. So when I answered the call I was still using the accent. The woman caller was immediately furious. She started screaming at the top of her lungs that she had specifically demanded to speak with. Someone who spoke English not A. Well let's just say her choice of words lay heavy on the racist side. And leave it at that. Realizing my error. I dropped the accent and tried to talk with the lady normally but she would have none of it. She continued on a horrible racist diatribe about foreign call center workers. How there wasn't any proper American English speakers anymore. And cussing me up one side down the other. Now I've handled a lot of angry calls by small-minded people but there is one hot button I will not tolerate. The caller started insulting my parents. You wish to talk with someone who speaks English. Correct? I broke in. Dropping back into the Indian accent at the same time. Yes. Quote. Not a problem. I said. I will transfer you to someone who speaks English. But. I must warn you. Do not disconnect from the call for any reason whatsoever. We are experiencing a rather large call volume at this time. You are currently at the top of the queue. But. If you disconnect and call back you will be all the way back at the bottom of the call line. And you do not want that correct. God no. Quote. Very well. Please stay on the line and the next available English speaker will be with you shortly. Have a most pleasant day. Then I put her on hold. It should be noted that we were not supposed to put callers on hold. But I did so that she would 1. Think she was being transferred and 2. Make her listen to the horrible hold music. Placing a caller on hold immediately sent up a red flag in the call monitoring software. Normally a supervisor would come storming over and demand answers. My supervisor, however, had his cubicle right next to mine and had been leaning over the top when I had initially fumbled. The call. He had also patched his phone into my line and heard everything the caller had said. What are you doing? He asked, while smiling a wicked smile. Exactly what she demanded. She wants to talk with someone who speaks English. Then that is exactly what she's going to get. I replied with my own shish, eating grin.
After five minutes I took the call off hold. And answered with my best Russian accent in place. Then on hold again. Five minutes later German accent. Then French. Then Swedish. Then Mario Brothers Italian. So on and so forth. For over an hour I kept. Transferring this racist B. Each time answering the phone with both good. Bad. And horrible accents speaking English. I thought for sure she would have caught on around the 30 minute mark when I spoke pirate. She didn't so I continued. After about 1 hour and 20 minutes of sending this woman on a verbal tour of the world the woman was. Sobbing so hard I could barely make out her distressed words. So I went in for the kill. I answered the phone with a thick southern draw. She was so happy. She spent a good 10 minutes telling me what a horrible experience she has had just to, finally, talk with someone who spoke, proper, English. I asked her what I could do for her and she told me what her issue was. It was something so simple that one of the regular agents could have handled it in less than two minutes. Finishing up the call. The woman once more thanked me for speaking proper English. I dropped back into the Indian accent. Not a problem at all madam. It was a pleasure to handle your call. You know. It is funny. You sound just like a woman I spoke to hour ago. Isn't life strange? With a satisfied smile. I hung up during the scream of choking rage. Never had a stutter. But I always loved doing accents. Yeah. I can relate about speaking to someone with an accent and picking it up without thinking. Never had a problem. Though. As big. Broad shouldered as I am. I never had anyone on the phone complain. Either. Did customer service for six years. Because I'd slip into it too easily. Almost like they never noticed it. I didn't dare try answering the phone with an Indian accent as we had so many customers from that part of the world. When I first started with the company, I had one Indian caller transferring service. He was a hoot as he wound up being pretty good with accents himself. One of the craziest things he said that he ever saw was when he visited a small enclave of Indian expats in Scotland. You think you've fallen into the twilight zone when you see a six-year-old girl dressed in a formal Sorry. With the red dot on her head open her mouth and out comes the thickest Scott brogue you've ever heard. Go for all the English, Welsh, and Celtic accents from the British Isles for next time. When you're halfway through helping someone and they drop the, so where are you based, question. Alarms bells go off. They then refuse to believe you're based in the same country as them so they ask about the weather. Or tram system or some other bullshit. Don't know, and actually don't even care, if this story is true or not, but I love it. Oh my. Have you ever seen that skit on SNL about a plane flying through several control zones in the UK? passenger having to deal with the local accents of the controllers. I think it's hilarious. Here it is. HTTPS. U2.be slash Ugarchuk 9 TMB. Often when I'm around a person with a heavy accent I subconsciously begin to mimic their accent. I don't realize I'm doing it until it is pointed out. Usually the other person thinks I'm making fun of them or something. This is a daily struggle for me. I grew up moving all over. The Southeast. New England. California. Etc. Since we moved so much when I was so young I would pick up the local accent quickly. Then when we moved again I would drop that one and pick up whatever the new accent and vocabulary were. Even as an adult I subconsciously drop in and out of accents depending on my audience. Sometimes people don't notice. Sometimes they point it out as a joke. Others get angry and think I'm mocking them. The worst reaction I got was about two months ago while talking to a very nice woman that spoke with. 
a heavy AAVE dialect and accent. Without realizing it, I dropped straight into the dialect because one of the places we had lived growing up was Inner City a block away from Section 8 and the elementary school I attended was overwhelmingly African American. About five minutes into our conversation, the woman interrupts me in the middle of my sentence and starts questioning me about why I was speaking to her in AAVE. How I was making her feel mocked and degraded. How white people aren't allowed to code switch into AAVE just because you're talking to a black person, etc. I let her say her piece and explained what had happened but she absolutely refused to believe me. It's a useful skill to have for communicating with different groups of people. But man is it a double-edged sword. Brilliant. And congrats on such an awesome skill you've developed. I've gotten better. However I used to slip into accents and speaking mannerisms of those around me very easily. This is a problem when I've worked in call centers for 15 years. I recall one time the caller had an Indian accent and I accidentally said something in a like accent. I do not think they caught on as they didn't say anything. However the rest of the call I'm sweating to enunciate every word just to be safe. As for the racist AF callers. Ooh they still are the worst one guy the first worked with was born in another country however was American. He still had a bit of an accent and from time to time would get yelled at because the caller thought they had reached a call center that wasn't American. Yeah. As an American one just have to say. We are not that special. Drop the act and let the person trained to help you. Help you. As someone with the mixed blessing of perfect pitch and accidental innate mimicking ability. I have had the pleasure of translating between people speaking the same English with different accents. It gets old in a hurry. Thick southern draw. It's draw. Actually. Very well written. We will watch your career with great interest. Immediately came to mind https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch v equals 4 v 2 c 0 x 4 q q l y the clip is in english she wanted someone who speaks english did you try a very heavy british accent they are the ones who invented english after all i mean were you still fired for having such a high average handling time? That'd throw your stats for the entire shift. I imagined your Indian accent to sound like Apu from The Simpsons and that made the final phrase. You said to her even funnier for some reason. You should record a sample of all your accents and throw it up on YouTube. You could start getting jobs as a voiceover actor for your various accents. Maybe do the who's on first skit and change to a different accent with every speaker change. Here's a story about a guy who had a great radio voice. HTTPS www.dispatch.com slash story slash news slash 2021 slash 04 slash 23 slash ted dash golden dash voice dash williams dash once dash homeless dash man dash who dash gained dash fame his radio voice announces run ohio gover 7348570002 I have that accent adoption problem too. Especially with British and Hispanic accents. It just comes out. I can't control it. It does come in handy like this though tears of joy. Beautiful. What a way to start the day. The funny thing is that when you, accurately, imitate the other person's accent. It make it easier for them to understand you more than are, made me smile. That last bit was so satisfying to read smiley face. 
If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Heracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.